Hello and welcome to the discussion of a new topic in our course of mechanics of materials and that is the topic of shear in beams. Now we have looked at shear previously. We have looked at shear with respect to you know the pulling and the pushing forces in nuts and bolts with respect to torsion and so on. But now we are going to solely focus on that when we have beams subjected to loading, bending moment and so on, how do the shears evolve? What is the nature of these different kinds of shears? So let's just go ahead and dive right into that. Now, as I said that uh, before we look into the shear forces in beams, uh, let's just you know go back and take a peek about what we saw essentially for shear when we talked about you know some of the other kinds of structures, like you know nuts and bolts and so on. So if you remember from our you know discussion in the very initial days of our uh, of this course of solid mechanics, we had you know in the first chapter when we were getting ourselves introduced to the different kinds of stresses like normal stresses what are normal stresses what are shear stresses we have also seen some examples of these kinds of shear stresses which are there for example you will recall that you know these examples of uh, double shear which we had looked at or you know for single shear it doesn't really matter so the main focus is that we have been exposed to this guy tau over here remember that shear stresses were always expressed in terms of tau and the forces typically in terms of v that's why when you come over here you see that at this interface at these you know junctures that we have over here uh, this is where the shear force acts it always acts you know along the four along the face right so if we have this bolt it always acts along that face which is there and since it acts along the face, this this force V that you see over here acting along the face, it acts over this area that you see for the bolt. And if this is A over here, then this guy tau, as we remember, or if you remember even more clearly, we said that it is in some sense the average shear which we are talking about and in this chapter, we will understand why it is called average. So we had seen that your tau average was equals to v that is the force remember so stress is always force divided by the area it was v divided by a right the total shear force divided by the total area which is there and also remember it is the tau average and we will see that how these assumptions you know sort of falls apart that there is nothing called an average shear it is good for our understanding but the actual stress distribution is actually slightly more involved so we had also seen like you know the single shear in a similar kind of a concept where we were having failure about say this particular plane and tau was again v divided by a now in addition to the in addition to these these aspects we have also learned one very important thing which is going to be extremely crucial when we talk about shear forces in beams that is the principle of complementary you know if you remember that if we have a small element within a body if we separate out a small chunk of an element and if it has tau on one particular face that automatically gives rise to the tau in all the other faces just to maintain equilibrium just to maintain the balance of the forces and the moments and 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 so that is the complementary part complementary part that it gives rise to you know shears in all the forces and the, that that the shear forces are one and the same and we had derived this that if we have a if you have a small body right and if we have the stresses as tau one tau two and any equal and opposite uh, stresses on the other side through the balancing of the forces and the balancing of the moment we have seen that tau one becomes equals to tau two so essentially the stresses that we have in these faces they are equal and opposite so that was the principle of complementarity that we have over here now with these two fundamental understandings first of all the shear stress tau and that if we take a small element within a body it is complementary in the sense that if you have a shear stress along one of the faces across all the four faces you are going to have shears with these understandings let's go ahead and try to understand that how shear forces act in beams and you will be very intrigued that how the shear force acts now uh, this is what we are looking at in beams and we had seen this figure also when we were starting bending although in that case we, are, we were you know focused on this you know the, the the bending moment over here but as a result so this is a cantilever beam and as a result of this force p if you cut a section somewhere you know this now because you are experts at drawing shear force diagrams and bending moment diagrams or any section x at any distance x we have the moment m and the shear force v now until now when the previous topic on pure bending we have already seen that you know how uh, 
uh, the moment uh, what kind of stresses what kind of strains that sigma equals to my by i what kind of stresses that it that it invokes right now in this chapter we are particularly going to focus on this guy over here the the shear stress the shear force v now uh, so so you have something like this right so we have the bending momentum which we are going to ignore for the time being because we are only dealing with shear over here so you see that what we had you know sort of decipher so you have this force v over here and as a result of v remember again that concept of or that you know sort of arbitrary concept of the tau average that is this v this force v divided by the cross sectional area a so this is this tau which is acting over here now here you see that you know this particular uh, direction is your uh, longitudinal direction that is along the length of the beam that we have so this is let me write this down longitudinal and this direction is transverse so what you are seeing is transverse right so this shear force this v and this tau is acting along the transverse direction that is you know when you're slicing that particular material that is there when you when you're slicing it so across this face the shear force that is acting that is the v which is acting over here so divided by a that you see over here that is going to give your average average shear stress so but the question the question here is that does this v only cause a transfer stress logically it yes logically from you what you see in the figure is that this is a force v which is acting all across this face or in this figure all across this face so this tau only gives rise to this particular shear over here but then let me show you some experiments which can be done and you can do this you can do these kinds of experiments at home as well so let me just take you to that one over here uh, if you have say this is the case where you have maybe three or four boards which are you know two dif two distinct cases in one case the boards are glued together so essentially you have at these interfaces that you see you have some amount of glue you know throughout you know running and you know here as well right and you have another case where the boards are not glued together so when you don't have the glue over here when you are if you are applying a particular force p over here as a consequence of that and you can do this at home as well if you take three or four you know those wooden scales and if you support them at the ends and then you apply a force at the center you will see that and if you have not glued those boards you will see they are they're going to they're going to kind of stick out of each other you can do it with a sheaf of paper as well they are going to have some amount of sticking out right and this is the case when they're not glued so when they are glued the board still has the tendency of sort of sliding from one and one and the other so you have this sliding kind of a phenomenon so this what this glue is essentially doing it is resisting at the interface of these boards it is resisting some kind of force that's why the glues are able that glue is able to stick things together in place and have this beam beautifully bent like this so you see you are somehow getting a hint that your moment and your shears you know, are sort of kind of related over here right so here you are allowing the boards or the particle boards to shift with respect to uh, one another and here that glue is resisting some amount of force along this particular direction and what is this direction remember this particular direction that you are looking at it is actually the longitudinal direction right so it is resisting some amount of force in the longitudinal direction to keep all the boards together and bending in a kind of a uniform manner right so if you want to look at an experiment this is done in the lab over here so similar kind of you have a support at the two ends and you have a kind of a point load at the center so you see over here how the boards are sticking um, you know out are sort of sliding from one another so what does what does that tell you so that kind of tells you is that that although you have this stress which is in the transverse direction which is in this particular direction which we call the transverse direction over here right you also develop because of complementarity remember what we discuss in complementarity that if we take a small element and if you have tau in one of the faces you are going to have tau in across all the four faces over there because of this force you have this tau over here and as a result as a consequence of complementarity you will have a tau here you will have a tau on the back side face at the bottom face as well this is not shown over here so because of this is the tau uh, this is the shear force which is essentially acting as all these interfaces which is resisted by this glue which you are seeing over here so 
it is not only transverse shear when the shear force is acting across the face of this member of this beam over here as 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 and when it is you know as and when it is bending you have shear which is running across the longitudinal axis as well so shear is not just transverse because of the complementarity condition it is as well as it is longitudinal shear as well so let's let's take a bit more look into that one over here so that means here complementary shear coexists this is the complementary what you saw over here you see this guy is this tau over here now if you cannot simply just have this tau because you have to balance it with a tau over here this tau and this tau and if you resolve it into forces you multiply with the you know face areas you will have forces equal and opposite forces separated by a distance it will cause a couple and that has to be resisted by this and this over here so essentially this tau gives rise to all of this tau over here they're all friends they coexist they live together and what these particle boards are are, are experienced like see here you don't see that them separating out why because this is one single material but if you consider this whole sponge that you see over here it is small 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 strips right each of these strips when i'm bending it each of these strips are also resisting this longitudinal shear as well so essentially that brings me to tell you that once you have so this is the face of the beam that you see over here and when you are having a transverse shear see this is the transverse shear this is the transverse direction so let's just mark it again so this is the direction of the transverse and this is the direction of the longitudinal right so when you have the transverse shear because of complementarity as a, as a result of the transverse shear uh, shear force you will have the transverse shear stress which is this guy over here and because of complementarity you will have a shear stress along this direction as well this is your longitudinal shear stress and this one is your transverse shear stress that you're looking at over here right so i hope that you have grasped this concept because this concept is going to be fundamental in deriving what is known as the very important shear formula and when we look at some of the other aspects of shear as well in later chapters so all you need to remember is that shear forces acting on a cross section does not simply result in shear stresses only in the cross section it gives rise to shear stresses along the longitudinal axis as well or in essence transverse and longitudinal shear stresses they coexist with one another also one more thing i want you to note before you go is that it's very interesting you see here the length of the arrows you see towards the center the length of the arrows are longer than towards the edges what's the reason for that we had always talked about the tau equals to tau average that is v divided by a if it's an average sense then the length of the arrows if they're representative of the magnitude of this would be same throughout so these arrows also kind of tell you that the shear stresses are varying across the depth of the cross section and in the upcoming lectures we will see why it varies and how is the variation depending upon the nature of the cross section that we have